The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. On the South today, Middlemarch stands in for Dunedin, getting in touch with its Scottish side for a day of celebrations. Tens of thousands of people welcome Santa to Christchurch as the city's Christmas parade returns but moves location. And it's a family affair on the golf course as a fundraising tournament in Dunedin spans the generations. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Hundreds of Keen Strathtyre residents demonstrated their Scottish skills over the weekend, despite being nearly 20,000 kilometres away from the motherland. The Highland Games were held in fine sunny weather, something event organisers admit may be a bit foreign to hardened Scots. Middlemarch residents getting into the Scottish spirit at the inaugural Strathtyre St Andrew's Day celebration. More than 400 people turned out for the Highland Games on Sunday. The annual event was previously held in the Octagon by the Dunedin Edinburgh Sister City Society, but this year's celebration fell through. So retired Middlemarch residents Ian and Linda McKenzie decided to hold their own rural version, complete with traditional bagpipes and haggis. Pupils from local schools joined in the Highland Games, putting their best foot forward for the stone put, caber toss and tug of war. A few local Highland legends also took part, including heavyweight champions Craig Manson, Danny Devine and Lindsay Crazy Wolf. Linda McKenzie reckons the event was a great experience for the Strathtyre community, with the location of next year's celebration still yet to be confirmed. In Middlemarch, the South today. After weeks of coalition talks between National Act and New Zealand First, the new government performed its first official duties this morning. Christopher Luxon was sworn in as New Zealand's 42nd Prime Minister after confirming his confidence in being able to form a government. Governor-General Dame Cindy Kiro appointed the rest of the Executive Council with Invercargill MP Penny Simmons and New Zealand First List MP Mark Pat Patterson given senior roles outside Cabinet. The Coalition Government is promising a range of changes this term which will affect Otago and Southland, including axing the Lake Onslow pumped hydro scheme, demerging the Te Pukinga nationwide polytech and banning cell phones in schools. Christchurch launched its festive season in style on Sunday with a colourful Santa parade and festival held at a new location for the first time. More than 30,000 people turned out to enjoy this year's parade, which returned to the city after a four-year absence. Colourful Christmas dancers getting into the festive spirit. Christchurch's popular Christmas show parade returned to the city on Sunday, bigger and better than ever, following a four-year break due to COVID and last year's rain cancellation. We have all of the old traditional Santa parade floats that date back 75 years. We've restored them all, uh, fixed all the motors, and we've got some new ones. We've got 66 entries in the parade, all singing, all dancing, and they are looking beautiful. There were Christmas floats for all tastes, featuring everything from a giant mother goose through to Disney princesses and traditional character favourites like the Mad Hatter. Got to go for the classic, we're all mad here. Off um, with his head, off with the head. Yes. Blue skies and warm temperatures helped attract more than 35,000 people, young and old, with the festive event held at the Canterbury Agricultural Park for the first time. Rika says logistics meant rethinking the event and combining the parade with a festival. We couldn't get the parade in the city. Uh, this out Christchurch has been designed in a way that it can now really host a parade. So we're having it here at the park, but we couldn't just bring here, people here to the park just for a parade. So we've had to supply entertainment. The event's run by the Christchurch Children's Christmas Parade Trust, who want to re-establish it as Christchurch's premier Christmas celebration. Headline act Santa Claus arrived on time to an appreciative audience in Christchurch. The big man had to pull his appearance in Auckland on Saturday, following an incident during the Avondale Santa Parade, which saw a Burger Fuel branded car roll into two members of a brass band group. 
but Santa assured everyone he would still be checking off their present lists ahead of Christmas Day. In Christchurch, the South today. The sound of high-octane engines echoed through Lawrence over the weekend as a loud and proud car show returned to town. The Rev Rock and Hop car show started with a roar on Friday with a weekend of fun for car enthusiasts and visitors alike. 200 people enjoyed the traditional car show along with the car run and burnouts on the dedicated pad. The three-day events become a firm favourite in South Otago, with the show raising money for mental health charities I Am Hope and Gumboot Friday. Organisers say crowd numbers were down on last year due to several competing events, although the Lawrence burnouts received a record number of entries, bringing a thrill to fans. Three generations of a Dunedin family are stepping onto their local golf course together, swinging their clubs to raise money for an important cause. The trio were part of a number of ladies competing at a tournament over the weekend, helping support communities in need. Taking a swing and making it look easy. Golf just naturally runs in the blood for this Dunedin family. Grandmother Kushla Cahoon, daughter Nicola Meader and granddaughter Millie Meader played together as a team at the third Edinburgh Women's Golf Tournament on Friday. The trio were among 72 ladies competing at the Otago Golf Club and raising money for the Otago Community Hospice. We don't need to know fully how to play golf. It's just about having fun, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Kushla says the sport's been a lifelong passion and is happy seeing Nicola and Millie following in her footsteps. We live right beside the golf course, so... <laughs> yeah, I think so, growing up beside the golf course, yeah, that was, that's yes. the key, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's so. just something you always yeah. did. The trio made the most of the chance to play together on the course and reckon it may be something rarer than a hole-in-one. In Dunedin, the South Today. FIR Kine, still to come on the South today. A Queenstown skier wins big internationally, firmly stamping her name among the greats. And from the ski field to the windy road up Coronet Peak as drivers speed their way through a hill climb. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Such a sweet girl. What are you dreaming about? This music. Power of Dreams by Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com.
Tinakwe, welcome back. Queenstown-based skier Alice Robinson has won big on the global stage, producing her best World Cup performance in more than two years. The Southern Alpine ski racer finished second at the FIS Giant Slalom World Cup in Vermont on Sunday. It's the sixth World Cup podium finish for Robinson, but her first in more than two and a half years. Snow conditions were hard and aggressive for the international competition, challenging the athletes to quickly find and hold their rhythm. Robinson had a blinder of a first run, the only athlete to clock time under 57 seconds, knocking Sweden's Sara Hector out of the leader's spot. But she wasn't as lucky in her second run, a disadvantage of racing last, leaving the course rough and in dimmer light conditions. Robinson threw everything she had at the run, crossing the finish line in second position, just 0.62 seconds behind Switzerland's Lara Gutbarami. The weekend podium finish was a long time coming for the 21-year-old old Queenstown resident. It sets her up well for the season as she prepares for next week's double up World Cup races in Tremblant. From Vermont, the South Today. Limits were pushed on a Queenstown ski field road on Saturday. 36 drivers, including international rally star Hayden Padden, put their pedals to the metal, ramping up the speed in the Coronet Peak hill climb. Racing on the edge of a cliff at blistering speeds. These drivers darting up the road in their high-performance cars for the annual Coronet Peak Hill Climb event. 34 racers took turns trying to set the fastest lap up the windy 2.7 km course, with World Rally Car driver Hayden Padden joining the mix with his EV Hyundai Kona Rally Car. Long-time motorsport enthusiast Mark Higgins set the pace for the event, finishing the stretch of Ski Field Road in just over 1 minute and 25 seconds. So I bought this car as a race car uh, about six or seven years ago um, and then we've modified it and changed it to, to suit what I'm doing. It was originally a track car um, and then yeah, modified it to suit hill climbs and street sprints so be really competitive there. Spectators from around Queenstown flocked to the high octane event, standing as close as they could to see the cars fly up the road. The hill climb event has been running since 1972 and has seen a variety of cars from different motorsports take on the challenge. The first two cars uh, were cars that were probably capable of being in, uh, oh the first three cars actually, uh, capable of being uh, in a rally uh, and or on the racetrack. Glenn Frew took the runner-up spot in his Mitsubishi Lancia with a time of 1 minute and 27 seconds and Patton finished in third place taking only 1 minute and 28 seconds to climb up the mountain. In Queenstown, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Middlemarch was filled with bagpipes and haggis on Sunday for the Strathtyre St Andrews Day celebrations. 35,000 people got into the festive spirit in Christchurch as the popular Santa parade returned. And three generations of a Dunedin family joined force on the local golf course, playing to raise money for the Otago Community Hospice. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We're welcoming Associate Editor Mike Houlihan. Hello Mike. Good evening, Hannah. What can we expect to read in our Tuesday paper? Significant developments in the, develop in the building of the Dunedin Hospital. Uh, they've now got consent approved for the inpatients building, which mm -hmm. is the larger of the two buildings. Mm -hmm. um, there's a public meeting tonight where hospital project management are explaining some of the latest details to uh, the population and we'll have the details in tomorrow's paper. Interesting. Plus some visuals of what the new hospital might look like. Oh, I'll look forward to it. Uh, DCC has been introducing a new bin system next year. Some Tell us about how that's going to play out. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunate story for a woman in Belle Clutha who's currently being scammed out of her money by someone claiming to be Kevin Costner. Oh no. <laughs> uh, and it's tra a travel section tomorrow now, right, as it headed off to Romania. Oh lovely. Okay, we look forward to reading. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Time now for a look at your weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, and it's a blustery day ahead for the region tomorrow as much colder air makes its way onto southern districts, bringing some widespread rain and some snow on the ranges. Heading to the top of the South Island, 
Cloudy with westerlies and 21 degrees up in Nelson tomorrow. Greymouth is wet and warm with 18 degrees. Or Christchurch scorches on 27 with high cloud and northwesterlies. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago. Expect a windy 26 in Ashburton with some cloud tomorrow. A thundery but warm 25 in Timaru and 22 with a southwesterly change and late rain in Oamaru. Heading westwards to the central lakes. Showers and gusty southwest winds are inbound through here tomorrow. By numbers, it'll be a 17 degree day in Queenstown, 18 in Wanaka, and up to 19 with heavy showers in Alexandra. Heading through the south, well cooler as we move over here with rain and southwesterlies bringing the highs to just 12 in Gore and Balclutha and wet and windy with 11 degrees in the Catlins. Across to Invercargill, showers and down to 11 tonight. Tomorrow's overcast with showers turning to rain before cold southerlies and a high of 11 degrees. And then Wednesday starts cloudy before opening up to a sunny but fresh 15 degree day. And finally heading to Dunedin, cloudy with showers and an overnight low of 12 degrees. Then Tuesday's warm in the city with 22, but it comes with showers and near gale force winds by evening. Into Wednesday and once the cloud breaks, it'll be a sunny but breezy day with 14 as the midweek high. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand, or follow us on Facebook. Search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists.